Hello. Husky's back again with more Dallas Stars GM Mode Franchise 1 commentary. Uh, last video we kicked off year... Uh, whatever it is. I think it's year 7. Year 7 or 8. Either way, it's our final year. Uh, we had a big win against Edmonton. Uh, we pretty much don't have much going on. I mean, our team's set. Uh, um, the only thing I'm going to keep an eye on is the fourth line and see if they get out of hand. Um, but the rest of the roster's set. It's good to go. I kind of want to put Dingman on the second line. I'm actually going to do that. Instead of Yamamoto. Because I feel like he's... I mean, he, I don't think he's as good as Yamamoto, but he's more balanced. Especially defensively. And I think that second line struggles defensively. At least they did last year. I mean, the guy's got five-star defense as a playmaker. So we're going to put him there. We'll see how he does. But yeah, let's go ahead. Let's hop in. Let's sim it up. Uh, we're going to do the regular season pretty much in this video. And we'll get ready for our final playoff run. Um, but while it's simming, um, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. I think we're going to win games. I'm going to talk about... Um, the something that was suggested in the past, which for a commentary video was uh, the future of Eric Carlson and Drew Doughty. Now, if you haven't heard, Drew Doughty came out saying that uh, he expects to fully get paid for what he's worth. Uh, kind of. Expecting a pig payday because I don't think Doughty makes all that much right now. Um, let me pull it up and see. I'm sure he makes a big contract because he is a top tier defenseman at the moment. Um, let's see. LA. So Drew Doughty currently makes $7 million, which is quite a lot. But when you look at some of the big contracts that have been signed... Uh, Anze Kopitar makes 10, McDavid makes 12 and a half, Dreisaitl makes 8. Um, you can see these guys expecting to kind of get more of an upgrade pay-wise as we move forward, but the cap kind of hasn't, isn't progressing as well as these guys' salaries hope to progress. Now, I feel like the Kings, they have good young defensemen between Forbert, Foline, Muzzin, Martinez. I mean, Martinez is 30, so he's not exactly old, but he's only making $4 million. Um, they have the cap room to make the necessary extension because they don't have to worry about Doughty for another two years, and the entirety of their core is signed. Um, but what that does is because Doughty said that he wanted to get paid, it kind of had a ripple effect to the NHL, and uh, Carlson was one to kind of chime in on it. I don't remember the exact quote because I read it a while ago, but I'm pretty sure Carlson was stated as saying it doesn't matter where he plays, but he's going to get his full value from where he ends up. Uh, now, full value for Eric Carlson, probably the best offensive defenseman of the era. Um, he currently makes six and a half. He's got two years left on his deal. This year, next year. Now, Ottawa currently sits with only 1.8 million in cap space. They don't have much to resign. They have to sign Mark Stone at the end of the year and Cody Cece. That's really it. And a couple of other smaller name defensemen. Uh, we're 38 one in. We're 38. Or th <laughs> My God, I just woke up. I can't read. We're 31 8 and 2. So I'm going to pause the Carlson conversation. I'll come back to it. But I want to see how we're doing. Jonathan Tavares, I mean, 26 goals in 41 games, 46 points. I'm interested to see how that second line's doing. Uh, does not look very good. 46 points for Tavares, 46 for PRV, 42 for Reinhardt. So they're all point per game players. Philip Forsberg bringing back the offense here. He's got 23 and 43, 41, 35 points. Yamamoto has 30 points on that for third line. Nico's got 29 points, Brady Shea, Dickinson 17, Shore 16. Dingman's only got 16 points, but he is a plus 9, so as long as he's a plus, I think I'm going to call that a success. 
Uh, that third line is a pretty heavy minus. Tikhanov, Yamamoto, and Dickinson are pretty much even. And then the fourth line, Shore, Foxa, and... Uh, Thomas are almost plus tens, so doing great. As for Demko, 27, 6, and 2, a 940 save percentage, a 187 goals against. Like, he is on fire. Uh, we're looking real good. Real good. I kind of want to see the standings, though. Like, are we... So we, we have a 11-point lead in the Central. And we have a 10-point lead on the Vegas Knights for the President's Trophy, but two games more played. Um... We score the most goals in the NHL, and we've given up the tie for the least amount. So we're just we're rolling on all fronts. We have the third best power play. We have the best penalty kill. We're the best team in hockey by far. Like there's, the, I don't think anybody's close to us in this series, this season right now, with the way that we're currently playing. That it's just absurd. But. As I said before, we're going to go ahead and sim to the trade deadline. And I'll go back to talk about Carlson. Uh, so like I said, Carlson currently makes 6.5. Uh, and the market in the NHL for defensemen, uh, you definitely overpay for defensemen. But Ottawa's kind of handicapped. If they wanted to bring back Carlson, they would have to move around quite a bit. Um, and trading Kyle Turris for Matt Duchesne, I think they just, they were, I think they both made six. Um, but what the big issue with Ottawa is, is they have a Dion Phaneuf contract for the next four years at $7 million, and he has a modified no trade and a no move clause. So Ottawa's pretty much stuck with the current team they have, unless they find a suitor for Dion Phaneuf. And I don't think teams are going to want to take Phaneuf. He's 32 with a $7 million contract. That's insane. Um... So I fully expect Carlson to not be not be in. I gotta I gotta look at this trade real quick. Robert Hag seventy nine. Nope. I always see the salaries and I get excited because he's like might be an actual NHL defenseman. And then I remember that we're so far in that salaries are way out of the picture or way out of control. Um, but I fully expect Carlson to not be in Ottawa when his contract is up. I'm sure he would love to stay there, and they would love to keep him. But if he wants full value like he says he wants, uh, Ottawa can't afford it. Because if you want to pay Carlson for his value, I mean, the guys led the led the defenseman in points pretty much besides Brent Burns. And that's a guy that you can kind of look at to... Um, compare possible contracts Brent Burns makes eight which is you know it's not too much more but Brent Burns is 32 whereas Carlson is 27 Brent Burns also has like a six-year deal at eight million dollars um, whatever team manages to bring Carlson on is gonna have to pay uh, probably McDavid type money I mean the guys like I said he's probably the best offensive defenseman of the current era And he's only 27 years old. He's had some injury issues with uh, the past couple years, but 43, 14, and 6. God damn, we're so fucking good. I gotta, I gotta see what how we're doing again. 92 points. We have a nearly 20 point lead on the Tavares is going down in stats. That's not good. So we have a. We have a 15 point lead in the Central. We only have a 3 point lead on the Vegas Knights, so we've got a 6 point lead on the Canucks. So we've kind of cooled off, but are we still the best offense in the league? Yep. Best defense? Yep. Oh, no, we're still the best team in the league by far. Like, it's not even close. Tavares, 38 goals, 67 points. Puyari, 65. Reiner, 57. Forsberg, he's kind of dropped his goal scoring, but he's still got 29 goals. Yamamoto with 42 points on the third line. Nico, 40 points. Actually, how many uh, power play points does he have? 16. So that's where he's getting all his points. They're coming on the power play. 
Brady Shea Carlson, big numbers. Shore, 26 points. Fox is 26. Dickinson, 25. Dingman, 22. Not the best, but still positive. He's a plus. Oh, that third pairing of Foot and Miranov, <laughs> plus 20s. The Perrier, this goal to this rookie is 6 1 and 1 with a 9 11 and a 261. So he hasn't been playing that well. But the team helps him out. Where then we've got Demko, who's, you know, best in the Canada right now. I actually want to see how he is comparative to the rest of the NHL. He leads the league in wins. Malcolm Subban right there behind him. Looks like he's got the best save percentage. Yeah, out of start. Oh, wait, I can do this. It's a minimum of 40 games. Yeah, best save percentage. Most shutouts. Best goals against average. He's faced the six most shots. Yeah. Uh, he's by far the best goal in the league. So we might see we might see some awards here coming out. I like it. I like it. Oh, speaking of Ottawa, that's who we're playing this game. I'll go ahead and finish off the sim. I'll keep talking about Carlson. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the guy's been nearly a point per game defenseman every season that he's played fully. Uh, his lowest point production was uh, which season was it? It was 2010. He had 45 points in 75 games. That was his second year in the NHL. Uh, since then, 78 and 81, uh, 74 and 82, 66 and 82, 82 and 82, 71 and 77, and he's got 30 points in 37 games this year. Now, he's only got three goals this year, but Ottawa's got uh, some offensive depth that he doesn't have to do all the scoring. But Ottawa's also struggling mightily. Um, now, he does have a no-trade clause in his deal. Um, so I would expect if... If Ottawa can't do something with Fanuf, uh this next offseason, we see Carlson go on the market trade-wise as maybe like a mid-season acquisition or an off-season move. Just because I highly doubt that uh, Ottawa wants to just let him walk. Now, they're not going to be able to pay... Come on, end the season already. Arizona, thank God, somebody new. But yeah, I'm, and what contract is Carlson going to get? I'd say he gets paid around like McDavid. I think he gets 12 or $13 million if a team can afford it. There aren't going to be a lot of teams that have the cap space to do that. But I mean, you look at teams that can kind of revamp the system they have. I mean, you're going to see somebody make a push for him. Like there's going to, somebody's going to have room. But yeah, I highly doubt that we see Carlson in Ottawa when his contract is up in two years. Or when his contract's up next, it's after next season. So I highly doubt that we see that continue. But let's look at our final year stats. Like I said, this was, uh, wow, Jesse Puyarvi for the first time in the Tavares era, somebody else leads the team in points. He still had 48 goals. Reinhardt, 75 points, a little off. Forsberg hit the 30 goal mark with 56 points. Uh, nobody else scored 20 goals, but we had 14, 15, 18, 17, 12, 12, 10, 10, or 11 and 11, sorry, not 10. I mean, we had so much scoring. Everyone was a plus, even that third line turned it around. Uh, the second line kind of was a little close, but that first line, 45, 41, and 39, we need to see that translate to the postseason. Goaltenders, Demko continued his Vesna status. 47 wins, 93 save percentage, and 198 goals against. Uh, 12 shutouts. Like, I'd be surprised if this guy wasn't the Vesna winner. Um, I don't think we're going to take the Art Ross this year, since we had so much depth scoring. Oh, it was close. Morgan Hannon. First round pick from Vegas. Led the league in points with 90. Followed by Puyarvi and Tarasenko. Wow, they have two rookies that are... Out of this world. Nine and a half. 
he signed an entry level deal. Sagan still patent points, 41 goals. Alessi, Rawson, McDavid, is he 99 yet? Nope, 96. Alex Tuck, Jeff Skinner, man. Oh, did he win the rocket? Oh, excuse me. He did, he won it by a point. So Tavares with his third straight rocket, Richard? No, I can't check. We pulled Arizona in the first round. Oh, I wanted to see if we won the President's Trophy. As we kind of cooled off there, we might not have won it. 116 points. Vegas takes it again, man. 120 points. Vegas is fucking good. I actually, we haven't met up with Vegas yet, which surprises me. But we've also haven't met in many conference finals, which is the way we're going to meet up with them. But I want to see their lines before we call this a video because I feel like we have time. Yeah, we have time. Uh, Vegas. Vegas. Here we go. So that first line, Solis, Bukestad, Hannon. That's pretty nasty. Second line, Peckham, Henrique, Tuck. Not too bad. And then the bottom six is all grinders, two-way forwards, and veterans. So they have great top six talent with Tuck, Hannon, Solis, and Peckham. Good, good two-way centers. Uh, defensively, Theodore, Klingberg, Zaitsev, Merrill, Reinhardt, Petrovic. Uh, not a bad decor as well. Who's their goaltender? Is it Subban? Yeah, Subban. So, I mean, their goaltender could be better, but he's clearly playing well enough. I wonder if this will be the year that we finally see them in the playoffs. Since, for once, we don't have to play... Um, uh, we don't have to play Colorado... Or San Jose in the first round, but we do have we do have one of those teams waiting for us for the next round. But that's where I'm gonna end this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like. Best way to support the series if you don't want to leave a comment, as well as subscribe to the channel. Oh, excuse me. If you want to know when the next video goes live. Uh, in addition to that, interested to know your comments on the Dowdy Carlson situation. Feel free to let me know in the comments have a little discussion but as always last but not least thank you for watching and i will see you tomorrow for our arizona series